Welcome back to Perspective with Mope. This is the very first video in this brand new decade of 2020 and I'm excited to delve into the topic that we have here on Perspective with Mope, which is simply titled Building Confidence. Let's get into this. So a huge welcome back to all the people that have been with this channel from the very beginning when we dropped that very first video. If you haven't watched it, I'm going to leave a link in the description. You can still catch up with the first two videos even as you watch this one. And also at the same time, a huge welcome to those who are coming here for the very first time and hearing the sound of my voice and seeing me on camera for the first time. I cannot thank you enough for clicking on this video, for taking the time to watch it. I can only hope and trust that everything that I'm going to share with you on this channel, on this platform, is not only going to be of impact to you, but also to your families and to your communities at, la at large. So what we have today is a title, is a video about confidence. And I think that confidence for me in my own life has been the difference between personal fulfillment and nagging regret. And what do I mean by personal fulfillment? Being confident, I guess now, has enabled me to really pursue the things that I want to pursue and to live the life that I really want to live and become the person that I really want to become. In many instances, before I was necessarily confident, it was really nagging regret because I think of all the instances when perhaps I could have been a little bit more bold, a little bit more outspoken, a little bit more, you know, honest with how I I really feel about some situations and so with the tools that I'm gonna share with you today my goal is to simply bring everybody to the realization that building confidence is something that happens on a daily basis and whether or not you were or are an introvert extrovert an ambivert whatever type of personality you describe or maybe perhaps you know associate yourself with confidence is something that you as well can build so let's get into the definition of what confidence is. Is it Batman? Is it Superman? Is it that guy who's always able to tell the girls how he feels? Or maybe it's those people who are always able to speak in front of people with no challenges. Those people who can speak publicly. Well, confidence is really about being sure of yourself. Some definitions say confidence is the ability to trust in yourself and in your abilities and what you have. I guess the opposite of, conf of, of no confidence would be insecurities. That means I'm always concerned about perhaps how I dress, how I look, what I have, you know, and even the things that I'm able to bring to the table. But being confident of oneself really implies that in spite of perhaps maybe other people being a certain way, it does not take away from the fact that I'm an incredible person as well. I like to think of confidence really like a garden because in honesty a garden has got many flowers depending on what your preference is we've got the traditional roses we've got the hydrangeas we've got the hibiscus we've got the bougainvillea depending on what kind of plant that you have and they're all in season and blooming at the same time and they're not worried about who's outgrowing who or who's blossoming better than the other person they just do what they simply know to do and that is shine and blossom and look beautiful I like to think this what confidence is all about confidence is knowing that in spite of other people having maybe other characteristics or abilities it does not take away from the fact that I am a, my own individual and I have my own strengths and my own abilities I'm no Channing Tatum but boy do I look good I may not be Beyonce Knowles but yes I look good too so this for me is what confidence is all about and some of the tools that I'm about to share with you have really been what has helped me from being so timid and perhaps a little bit you know nervous in, in, in public settings and being withdrawn and always regretting why I couldn't speak out or why I couldn't pursue a certain action is these are the tools that I've invariably used to get me to this place but before I share the tools there's something that I'd really like to debunk and perhaps bring clarity to and this notion that says this is who I am. You don't understand, mother. This is who I am. I've always been like this. Like, you know, I'm just quiet. I, I, I'm just reserved. No, no, I'm just shy. Like, people want to believe that that's who they are. But there's a particular saying that I love so much a wise man wrote once. And it simply says that as a man thinks, so is he. So that means that is not necessarily who you are, but that is a good reflection of what you think. It's easy to even, for example, take for instance, if you've ever observed any child 
anywhere playing, they dress up in their costume, and they are literally engrossed in that world that they happen to be in. If he believes that he's playing banks and robbers or even pirates, he is so far gone in what he's doing that nothing and no one can convince him that that reality is not true. And I find that a lot of grown up people, adults, are literally in that situation. What they think has created the reality for the world that they live in. So it's not necessarily who you are, but more a reflection of what you think. So now if you're able to start seeing yourself in a different lens, and I talk about this extensively in my first video, which I'm going to put a description to the link to in this uh video you can go ahead and watch it so now let's get into the tools that i believe are going to effectively help you build your confidence and i like to think of this more of construction business than anything because each and every tool that you're using is either building and getting you closer to the life that you want to be or to, to have and to the person that you want to become or it's building a war in between the life that you want and the goals that you have set for yourself I like to think that every person on every single day is I guess faced with a numerous amount of thoughts about themselves you know from thoughts about your parents to thoughts about your finances about your education about your knowledge about your circle of friends you know about what you eat about what you weigh like every day multiple thoughts are running through your head and the majority of those thoughts if we're being honest are not a proper reflection of who we truly are perhaps one day you sat down and try to reach your friends or even two friends or even four and somehow the responses just didn't necessarily suggest that they wanted to be or hang out with you and you made the conclusion perhaps I'm boring and I'm not interesting maybe on a given day you know somebody did something to you that perhaps was a poor reflection of their judgment and you took that and made it a part of who you are and said you know what maybe I'm always picking the wrong people to be part of my life you know or maybe you failed on an exam and you decided to take that and say, you know what, this is a reflection of who I really am as a failure. And adversely, this was adding or is adding poorly to your self-image of yourself because that reality that you're now creating is not a reality in which confidence can really thrive. So if we're going to build confidence, then we have to be able to separate truth from what is simply, you know, thoughts that do not necessarily build or help us get to the people that we're trying to become. For example, each and every one of us have, is presented with numerous thoughts. We're going to have person A, who I'm going to call for this argument, Mike, and we're going to have person B, who I'm going to call Joel. And so Mike, on a single day, is thinking about all the things that he could have, you know, how he could look, or maybe things that he wished he could do better, or if he could sound like Moffitt, perhaps maybe then he could be a good public speaker. On any given day, those are the thoughts that Mike is constantly having. At the end of the day, the conclusion that Mike is going to come up with, and the result of that is that he's building a wall with those thoughts on any given day. If you'd seen the poster for this particular video, you see that there was a man who was laying bricks, and I like to think of it that same way. Way. Every thought that you have is invariably laying a brick upon the foundation of what you see yourself as. So Mike's foundation is always, you know what, I'm not good enough, or I'm not tall enough, or I'm not light-skinned, or I don't have enough money, or maybe this is just who I've always been. No, I can't speak in public. No, you know what, I can't even run as fast. I'm not as athletic. I'm not this, I'm not that. So guess what? A war is invariably being built between Mike and the person that he wants to be. Because deep down within each and every one of us is an aspiration for greatness we want to aspire to the things you know that we have envisioned for ourselves and for our families we want to have that dream job we want to have those things we want, we want to be able to speak publicly we want to be able to communicate without any difficulties we want to be able to pursue our dreams without any challenges but on any given day Mike is building a war that's keeping him from those things and that war is filled with all these thoughts that he's been grooming over time and now it's become the great war of Mike now let's look at Joel who on the other hand has understood that any thought that comes to him is not necessarily founded on truth and Joel understands to say there is a man named Paul who wrote a letter to the Philippians and in that letter he said that whatever is true whatever is just whatever is noble whatever is uh, lovely whatever is praiseworthy if there be any good report and if it be of any virtue think on these things and so Joel uses, uses that as a litmus test for every thought that comes his way so whenever a thought comes to him and says you gained weight you're starting to look a little bit ugly and he says you know what that's not necessarily true 
to the thought that comes to him, you failed an exam and this just means that you're a failure. He understands to say, you know, that's not necessarily true because it doesn't have any praise. It's not praiseworthy. And so the tools that Joel uses for his life are building a bridge that's making it easier for him to leap and to get to the life that he so desires and admires and he's aspiring for. And so the same tools that Joel used are what I've used for my personal life. Some people would argue with me and honestly, you'd I would have to take you back into time to show you that I used to be timid, I used to be afraid. I remember in my first uh, term as a prefect in my school, I would be afraid to speak in the dining hall because of all these students and I was thinking to myself, yo, some of these kids are bigger than me. Who am I to say, hey, keep quiet or don't do this and don't do that. But over time, I started to partner with the idea that if I'm if I've been elected and I've been chosen as a prefect, it must mean that I'm really supposed to be here. In other settings, I've been in leadership roles and I've literally had to agree and partner with the mindset that says, you know what, if you've been elected as the president, as the leader in this setting, it suggests that there's something about you that suggests you should be here. I didn't try to eliminate myself and you say, you know what, this was a fluke or this just was something that just happened because my mindset was geared at picking all of the right thoughts and using the litmus test of, is it true? Is it pure? Is it just? Is it lovely? Does it have any praise? Like, is it praiseworthy? Is it of a good report? You know, does it have any virtue in it? And those thoughts are what I partnered with and slowly began to build my self-confidence. A lot of people would be surprised to hear this, but I never really thought of myself as handsome. Some people literally tell me that on a <laughs> not on a daily basis, but shout out to my mom who reminds me that I'm a handsome boy. But that was never a reality that I believed. But until I started to partner with that mindset and every day slowly building and laying every brick on that foundation, it was building the bridge to who I saw myself and who I wanted to become. And so if you're willing to take these steps on any given day, take an inventory and a complete um, analysis of the kind of thoughts that you have on, on a day-to-day -day basis. If your mindset is wired towards, this is who I am, this in Bemba, they say, okay, now with your feeling, like you need to really assess those thoughts and determine whether or not they're true and whether or not they're aiding you become. All right, so these are some of the tools that I personally have used in my journey so far, not only to become confident about who I am, what I have and the skills I have, but even to be able to inspire other people. And I, before I end this video, I really have to say a big shout out to Tokozile, who, whose birthday happens to be today. She's a very good friend of mine and has known me for a very long time. I can only wish you long life and the success that indeed is due to you. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching yet another installment of Perspective with Mote. I will be I guess seeing you all in the next video please feel free to share to subscribe to like click the notification button and see you all in the next video